60 Minutes Rewind. There's a battle being fought for public spaces all over the country. In no place is it more apparent than in one of the grandest spaces of all, New York's Grand Central Station. Homeless people with no place to go claim it as a refuge. Travelers with places to go find the homeless an unsightly embarrassment. But somehow, the grand old station, its glory long gone, manages to accommodate everyone. Grand Central Terminal, the next station stop. The terminal once was called the greatest enclosed space in the country, an architectural masterpiece. In its prime, it greeted presidents and world statesmen and international grand dames. Its name, Grand Central, and its trains, like the 20th Century Limited, captured the romance and elegance of an age. At dawn, with the terminal still closed, that age is alive, at least in your mind. It's easy to imagine a scene of bustling Pullman porters and matched leather luggage and passengers bound for distant California. But now, from its early morning opening to its late night closing, squalor overwhelms the old terminal. At 5.30 in the morning, when the terminal opens, grimness Let's go. waits Come at the on, gate. Let's go. The first arrivals are not travelers, but the shuffling legions of New York's homeless. The terminal's melancholy gatekeeper is Frank Leotta, a cop who's seen too much of this world. You in touch with the world, miss? Let's go. Come on. See if you get all this stuff out of here. You got to get it moved. Officer Leotta's concerns are simple. Get this human driftwood through one day, one emergency, one meal at a time. They'll be serving breakfast soon over at St. Agnes. See, these are some of the problems. Here's a homeless man, carries all his belongings with him. It's unreal. This is all yours. I was in Korea 25, 30 years ago. It's just like Korea was. It's devastation. Grand Central is the gateway to the world where many a life crosses paths. Conductor Flash Fallon comes in from suburbs plain and fancy with the station's morning commuters. Fifth and Grand Central. Local train in New York. He maintains a remnant of Grand Central's old dignity, treating everyone on the inbound local as if they were passengers on the 20th Century Limited. Local train in New York. Watch your step getting on, please. Watch your step, please. Watch Flash your step is of the old the school. Take your time, miss. Take it be easy. Be courteous. Try to be on time. All aboard. And they're off. New York's workhorses are out of the gate. For a few hours each morning, this wave of commuters controls the station. But they don't even have time to soak in the sunlight that streams across the terminal floor, each too busy watching out for the horse in front, saving a few breaths for the mad dash to the wire. The prize is just a place on the escalator up. Keeping these horses moving is the job of 6,000 Metro North employees. The conductors say it can be a thankless job. You're the whipping boy. You're the one out there. You're the first line troops. People have show their nasty habits on the train? Yes. 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 For example. Feet on the seat. Refuse to take your feet off the seat. I got one guy picking his feet on the seats. <laughs> Put his shoes and socks off instead of picking his toes. Said, Give me a break, pal. <laughs> and that's civil compared to this. A uh, lady was complaining about something that had happened to her. You know, and uh, that something, some kind of substance hit her in the head or something. You know, I walked back into the car finally to see what's going on because he said the lady was pretty incensed and uh, somebody had pulled like a, a vile act of nature on her, you know. Uh, <laughs> a vile and, uh, act of nature. But I don't know if I could say what he did on TV. We need to say it. We'll, we'll decide. We decided. You can find out what he said on our cutting room floor. Upstairs, Officer Leota's job never ends. His orders are keep the homeless moving. Even if the law says the homeless have as much right as the traveling public to be there, it doesn't say the station has to let them sit on the floor. Let's go, get up. Let's go. Station master Michael Murphy has to share his terminal with the mad and the sad. This terminal is here for the commuters. That's what we're here for. And if they have to come in and watch behind them, be in front of them, and to the side because of what's going on, I think that's a disgrace. 30 years ago, it never was allowed. You didn't dare put a cigarette out on the floor here. 
Not in those days. Now, now, you, uh, now I hate you to tell you what's on the floor. Now you take a look and you see what's going on right now. The station is filled with scams and scoundrels and skirmishes for turf rights. This is like coming into a, a, a den of iniquity. No, not me. Break it up. I'm not leaving. You got the ones that are homeless. Then you got the ones that are mental. Then you got the homeless that are complete felons. They sell crack. They go out and mug people. They're a bunch of thieves. They're all young kids. And they're built like horses. Two male blacks ejected K Main Concourse Station forces. To help see past the grime and despair, tour guide Val Ginter tells noontime tales about Grand Central's grandeur. Also, Grand Central Terminal is a monument to the heritage of railroads. From the floor to the ceiling is 125 feet high. You could put a 12-story building in here if you wanted. To. Another thing, notice the big arched windows out there. The arched windows that we saw on 42nd Street. Not Art Nouveau, and it wasn't Art Deco, but it was it was the kind of thing that this is a very modern design. You know, there could be a lot more frou-frou inside that concourse there. That was quite modern. The lofty concourse, the soaring arched windows, this marble double staircase have made this place a movie maker's dream. But it was pure dream, never the way Hollywood portrayed it. With Pullman Porters, the picture of black contentment. The movies are lunchtime morale boosters for Grand Central's employees. Quaint and phony memories. The evening rush. The commuters are back. The quickest way to get to ride. The station goes into reverse. Get these workhorses back to their suburban stables. Look at the board right there. Above all, Grand Central is theater, New York's best attended public theater. Today, it is a loosely choreographed ballet to the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. No, sir, 553 on track 31. Watch it. Always in a hurry, always in a hurry. Always in a hurry. Myself, when I first started working here, I, I got lost in the station. Okay, where do we go? Call information, I'll give you time to track. That's the subway information. You have to check with the gentleman on the other side. A Metro North information on the other side of the broadcast. Sorry. Know which Every day I go home, I can look on the board myself. Customer here the other day, would you believe it? Fairfield? Fairfield. I says, could I help you, sweetheart? Would you believe me? It was a guy. Fairfield. Mm -hmm. Fairfield. Yes, sir. Yeah, Heineken, please. Grand Central's biggest moneymaker is Rush Hour Refreshment. Will that be all, sir? Two Heineken. Two Heineken. Commuting is thirsty work. Minute, don't even try it. All the way down, miss. Well, it's just when you're in a hurry to get food. The story will continue after this. The commuters exit stage left. Time to bring on the nighttime blues. The broken spirits assemble. They shuffle across this shining marble stage. They are the actors now, perhaps waiting for Godot. And that's where you look. <laughs> that's where you look. <laughs> Each evening, volunteers from Wall Street give a little back. Faces of despair, submission. Yeah, come on, sport. Closed, Even this refuge has its closing time. 
At one each morning, the police begin their reluctant ritual of moving the homeless out. They clear the main concourse, then head down to the bowels, searching for the station's phantoms. You ain't allowed here, so come on. If they clean this whole place up, between the waiting room, the whole terminal, up a lower level, all the tunnels up from here up to 125th Street on down, you probably end up with four or five hundred people. Come on, Pop. Get your stuff together. It's hard to come here knowing that you're going to see a lot of the same faces that you saw the day before, and right? they're still going to be here. You okay? Or they might be carried out on a stretcher, and you may never see them again. You all right, Pop? Yeah, on the nice 10 floors down the below, yeah. there are abandoned trains, thousands of nooks and crannies. Get your stuff together. Get your stuff together. Let's go. And 56 miles of steam tunnels. We sleep in every place, on top of the tunnels, under the tunnels, uh, on top of the steam pipes, under the steam pipes, uh, in the elevator shafts, everywhere you can look. This place is not very safe. No, it's not a good place for you to sleep. All right, I don't want to see you down here again. The advice is heartfelt, but futile. Everyone knows that when the gates come down, some have been locked in, others locked out. The play is over for the day. The actors are exhausted. It's 1.31 a.m., four hours of rest for this grand station. And the whole awful, wonderful drama begins yet again. <laughs> 